What's up, fellow senders? Welcome back to my channel, Chill Buddha Dreams. I've got another action packed episode for you this week. An episode I've been really looking forward to create. About my first race racing for the Terra Mongers, where the race is dedicated to the life of our dear friend Brad Joyner. A man whose spirit will forever be entangled with the passion of this sport. I'm gonna go check on the plate. The morning after my last episode was a nervous one for me. It's race day. So half Aspen is open for racing between 9 and 11.45. Breaking Bad, if you're racing it, is open between 12.45 and 3. So if you're racing half Aspen, you need to get a race run in before 11.45. So make it your first run. Yeah. Um, and the plates don't, the numbers don't matter, um, so you can, Right all over it, make it, you know. They're yours to keep. Honor Brad. Honor Brad. <laughs> Adam. Is this your first race? No, but it's my first race in a long time. I sucked at all the other races because I never really. Where'd you go? Like, I broke myself off at a, at a zombie goat in like 2021. Uh, I raced a couple of other races during that series. A lot of uh, Southern Enduro Tour stuff. Gotcha. Which I'll never race again. We took Aspen for Trouble to the other side of the mountain to start off on the only stage I didn't pre-ride the day before. The view on the way there was phenomenal. Ah, uh, three, four minutes, if that. It just depends on how fast you go, Amanda. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody, wants to, if anybody wants to give her the berries, please go in front of me. I have no berries. Jesse, you want to go? Ooh. If you're leading it out, Ron, I'm going to give you a bit of a gap, though. Right. Let's get it. Let's go. Woo! Woo! For Brad. Go. Oh. Turn. Go. The start of this run was already rough. And it was definitely fast. Tight as I said. Good, dude. And Ron just hit this skinny for fun. Oops. I was still way behind and doing what I can to catch up. I don't have a chain. Dennis was back there. I don't have a chain. Good. Oh, that sucks. <sighs> I ran off, fell off the trail, uh, both Pat and Jason. Yeah. What Jesse said was going to happen exactly right. happened to me. I rolled up on the wall of that rim and I just, I was going up and I was like, I'm jumping this thing. And I can't, make it, ended up over it. Jumping out of the rut. Man, I did great. <laughs> I didn't crash once. 
I'm not too sweaty yet. Give me a hug. Oh. Right. Did y'all ride both of these trails yesterday? Yeah. Well, one of them. No, this is my first time out here, and I just crashed. Just now? Yeah. Are you already starting the race? Yeah, we did just one stage up there, which was... And you crashed the first one? The first stage, yeah. I didn't get to try it out yet, though. That was the first time I rode that stage. See you guys. You know who's Sid Mackey are? Huh? Sid and Mackey? We then ran into some real YouTubers who are local to these trails. <laughs> Punch that back Thank in Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, you too. Have fun out there. You too. How was y'all's first run? <laughs> hey, we're about to do this one. Um, uh, remind me. I'm not gonna be as fast as that guy. Next up was JR to Chupacabra. I remember this one from pre-riding, but still wasn't very comfortable with it. But Ron was up front cooking. Oh. Two stages, two crashes. Not a good start. All I wanted was to just finish all the stages, which is challenging enough. Don't worry about me, I'm just riding. All right, cool. That's what I'm, I'm trying to get, do. like you said, a clean run down and be on two wheels. Yeah. Just have fun, bud. We're just chilling. We're, we're riding park laps. All right, here we go. I took a break to get my head right while Chad and Ron went ahead and hit Sidewinder to Air Raid to battle stations on their own. Looking at the footage, you can see how smooth and fast these guys are. I need a lot more saddle time to be as fast as these two. Looks like Chad took the wrong route. I'm sure he had to run it again. Because it is very loose and rocky. Yeah. What, this first section? No, you. whenever you get out to the road, you'll go to the left and then make a right back into the trail. And remember, it's like shelves, like rock shelves. Yeah. yeah. All right, so what's the best plan of action to get on this one on the line? Stay I right. Up yesterday. Stay right. My best advice <clears> is, to, like, as soon as you go into the tight corner, you have to let go of your front brake. Like, you can't make that corner with your front brake dragging at all. And that's what most people do is, like, hit the front brake last minute and do that. So if you like break all the way down it with both brakes and it's like as soon as you slowly get to the corner, keep your rear brake on, let the go. let go of your front brake. 
Thank you. Yeah. You ready, Amanda? No, let's go. With some expert advice from the race coordinator, I was ready to tackle this stage, which I struggled with the day before. Still nowhere as fast as I wanted it to be, but I was making it down in one piece. <sighs> three stages, three crashes. This is not a good look, Adam. <sighs> racing against myself at this point because all that time off my bike has been adding up and I'm not prepared to rewrite everything. was unreal. My body was jarred. I let go of the brakes to like do this number yeah. and do that. And then I go into a corner and I'm just going up. <sighs> I keep losing my chain. Good thing is you can go on this trail chain. <clears throat> really? Not really, but f <sighs> Have you done this one yet? Yeah. Okay. Stupid. The hardest stage of the day is dog patch, which turns off of Aspinola. With three for three on crashes, my only goal was to get down this insanely steep trail as clean as possible. I wish the GoPro would show you just how steep this trail really is. So far, so good, even in the toughest sections. Chad and Ron made it to the end, but I still had a ways to go. Few more turns and I'm home free. Where'd you go? Huh? Huh? I made it. Safe. Huh? There you go. There you go. Huh? You made it. This last section wasn't part of the race, but it was the most fun. my race run this is my race run so all right. right so who how are we lining it up for maximum speed we're not going for maximum, maximum speed, speed. We're going for maximum, <laughs> smile. maximum smiles i like this maximum yes smile, so. all right who's going first greg all right greg uh, go I'm gonna go behind you. okay the last stage on my list was aspinola 
saving the easiest for last. After those other trails, I felt much more confident on this trail. This trail is definitely for party laps. I'm really pleased with that run. That was yeah, good. Felt good. I felt yeah, good about I that. I good to do. You got everything in. Um, but you want to keep going, right? Yeah, I think I want to keep going. Yep, still on. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, I did get everything. Oh, I can get like the first. Small yeah. I survived all the trails, but with time running out, I decided to have some fun on Aspinola instead of trying to make up the three stages I crashed on. And with the pressure of the race behind me, I was having a blast. I felt a bit faster too. months on this mountain, I know I'd walk away a better rider. And to my surprise, I shaved a solid six seconds off that stage. That's right, Brad's bike is the only bike we'll probably ever allow in front of the podium. <laughs> I've got to say his name twice on the podium. I have no idea what he's changed other than he's just living life in third place for the Terramongers in Texas Lone Co. 19 minutes and 12 seconds, Elliot Reed. 18 minutes and 24 seconds, sorry to embarrass you, Elliot. Chad Judd. The Terra Bongers, Texas Lone Co. and DBHQ, Big Ron Duro! Sick, Ron moved to the first yeah. place. You do have to be here to accept your award. And it is the 50 plus class, and I think uh, Murder She Wrote's on today. So. Yeah. Amanda Williams! Jonathan Reinhardt! This is Brad Joyner. Um, he was a huge, huge part of our uh, Texas Enduro mountain bike scene. Um, I know a lot of you guys aren't from there. Uh, but it kind of branched out and we started having races here, Purgatory, Angel Fire, all over the mountains. But uh, one place Brad loved over every other place we went was Pajarito. And by definition, in the encyclopedia, if you can find one that's paper anymore, um, Brad is, picture is next to dirtbag. Um, not the climbing kind, the mountain biking kind. There's a difference. But this guy did He's come out here since, I think, the first year in 2018. And every year, except for 20 when COVID kicked us out, you know, he'd be out here early a week, and I'd be up taping, and he'd just go up and do trail work by himself. Very own Stuart oh, yeah. Maxwell! Stuart! And the Terra Dingle Bonders <laughs> in a time of 13 minutes and 56 yeah, seconds. Yeah. Scott yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. You're an expert men's podium. <laughs> Brad was a Terra Monger, and I'm grateful to be associated with that same family of dirtbags.
After the podiums, we gathered up in the trucks for a trip up the mountain to catch the sunset and spread Brad's ashes at his favorite bike park. <laughs> And on the way up, we jammed out to his playlist. I got, I got the whole thing stitched up for you. Look at those sticks, Owen. Look at all of them. His wife, daughters, and close friends here to remember him. Okay, I wanted to thank everyone for coming out to celebrate Brad's life and say some words. <laughs> you got it. You got it, you got it Julie. Okay. Take as much time as you need. Um, if anyone else wants to say anything after they can, we, before we do this, they can. Um, Brad was a loving husband most of the time <laughs> and a devoted father and a dear friend to many. He could turn any moment into a hilarious adventure. He approached life with a remarkable sense of optimism and a warm smile that could light up a room. Brad had a gift for finding humor in the most unexpected places. A talent he often used to keep, up, keep us all laughing through the ups and downs of life. His sense of humor wasn't just reserved for family. He spread his laughter wherever he went. His laughter was a gift that could brighten the darkest days. There was no stranger to Brad. He made friends everywhere he went and touched the lives of everyone he encountered. His love for adventure was an inspiration to all of us and a reminder to embrace life's opportunity with open arms. In his memory, let's not dwell on the sadness of his passing, but rather let's carry forward his legacy of laughter. Praise Brad. Rest in peace, Brad. So at some point, going to new places, riding bikes, I stopped looking at maps because Brad was always there and always knew where we were going. And if he hadn't been there already, he had a really good idea of where we were going. So I stopped looking at maps. I just trusted wherever he was going to be that we would be fine. I could follow him and it would all be all right. If he told me that I had something, I wouldn't go look at it. I would just go follow him because it would be fine. And every time it was fine. You have the best daddy. I miss your daddy every day. You too, Brody. No. <clears throat> he taught me to appreciate the woods. He taught me to appreciate the forest. I love what you create for other people. He inspired me to build so that other people could have an awesome time. And I'll never forget it because this, this is a quote that he was just like, a bike park is only as good as it's greens. <laughs> <laughs> so I met Brad in Cypress Creek Trails in Houston for a lot of you, some of you who don't know. And so I love my biking. How he, you know, just treated me because I rode a bike. You know, and just like all of you guys, it's just like, you ride a bike, it's just no matter what, like, it's family, like, nothing else. And Brad and Ron was one of the ones who really introduced me to that feel of family. But anytime me and Brad ever communicated, this has just always been open arms. And Brad never met a stranger. Kind of like Reggie, you know, I met Brad. Bear with me. I met him on the trails like everybody else. Uh, I'll, I'll go next. Uh, I met all these guys shortly after moving back home from Washington. I was super bummed that I was having to move back to Texas. And my buddy Paul was like, oh, do you know Brad Joyner? I was like, no, I don't. He's like, I can't believe you guys don't know each other. <laughs> so I hit him up on Facebook and said, hey, man, our mutual friend Paul said we should be friends. So I'm moving back. Let's hang out. And uh, 
I came and met you guys at Zombie Goat, like that next, that was like the weekend after I got home. And it was a blast. We partied and rode bikes and honestly, like hanging out with you guys and traveling like makes living in Houston not suck. He was just always a fun person to be around. And I mean, even when I moved to Bentonville randomly, he was like one of the first, him and, and Pablo, first people to just be there for me. Brad wanted to learn from me and I'm nobody to learn from on a mountain bike at all. Cause I'm, especially at that time, I didn't even really know what I was doing. I, it was just had two wheels and handlebars and I was like, cool, it jumps stuff. So I'm gonna jump stuff. And Brad was inquisitive and he wanted to learn. And um, um, the more I got to learn who Brad was, the more I was like, why is this guy trying to learn anything from me? He knows so many things. Like, like every conversation that I was around that he was involved in, he would just know things. He was like, oh yeah, that, if you ever go there, do this. Oh, that beer, it's this. Oh yeah, this thing, yeah, it's this. Oh, when you set this thing up, it's this. You know, a lot of people, they talk about Brad and, you know, he was a dirt bag and he was, he was smelly and these things. <laughs> I, I know some people know here, but he was probably one of the smartest people. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. You know, um, we would often, you know, and, and he had this this effect, he, he, it was a Tuesday at 4.30, he's like, hey, you want to come ride Timberlane? And I'm like, not really, but uh, okay, I'll go. And, and it would just be him, him and I, we'd ride Timberlane or we'd ride the Woodlands Trails. And we would talk the whole time, not about what? building jumps or, or, we would talk about the state of the economy. And he'd often send me articles and <laughs> real estate listings. And, and I'm like, you know, what, what's going on? And and the more we talked about it, he was just a very sharp, smart guy. I mean, he knows, he knew a lot of things. Oh, no, 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 no. Dagger. Oh, yeah. Robot sucks! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Woo! 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 It's okay. <laughs> That smell out. <laughs> <laughs> right Stop your feet. It was perfect, Owen. <laughs> Good job. After the sadness, we gathered back into the trucks and headed back to camp for some dirt bag fun. <laughs> this channel my goal is to continue to tell my mountain biking story one experience at a time and to share some sick edits of all the great trails Bentonville has to offer along with all the other destinations I aim to visit this is a whole new experience for me and I would really appreciate your support if you enjoyed this video please like and share and if you want to see more please subscribe comments are welcome and hoping that you keep them positive and remember guys be chill and stay shredding